Hi guys and welcome back to the Ossity Factor. Today I am here with the brow queen herself, Naza Moedine. And today we are going to be talking about the brow bar and all things brow related. Right. Okay, so let's start by what inspired you to start the brow bar? So the brow life basically chose me. Um, I had a clinic whereby we offered skin peels and laser and facials and through that um, we would end up selling treatments and manicures and pedicures at the back end of a brow um, appointment. Clients would travel from far off, like from Friedrichshafen and Pretoria to Krugersdorf for their eyebrows and that's when I saw that there was a demand and a gap for brows. And um, I had this crazy idea of opening up a brow kiosk, just offering, you know, quick, efficient brow services. And I did my research and I found that in the in, in Europe and in the States they have something similar to this. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started the brow bar in 2011. Wow. Were there any challenges because this is an amazing setup? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, with any business, there's always challenges that you face, whether it's financial, whether it's your staff, whether it is um, training and reinforcing, keeping the standard of the business high. There's always challenges. But the key to your success is believing in your dream and persevering, being consistent, reinforcing um, the trainings, and um, yeah, and so here we are, busy with our store number four. Wow. So where are the four stores besides Durban? Okay, so we currently have Clearwater, which is our flagship store in the west of Johannesburg. Um, we have Mall of the South, which is in the south of Johannesburg. We have La Lucia Mall, and we're busy opening um, Menland in Pretoria on the 24th of November. Wow. Okay. That's a... <laughs> It's crazy how many stores you have and the store is amazing. Um, tell me about your process with the, when you do your brows here. Okay, so the entire process when you, from the time you walk in to the time you sit down on the chair, it is an experience. It's just not about brows. It's about everything that frames your face. So I always say you make brow contact before you make eye contact. And it's been proven that um, if you have to shave up your eyebrows, People would find it difficult to recognize you without your brows and your eyes. Mm -hmm. So scientists have proved that you need your brows for facial recognition more than eyes themselves. So the moment you walk in, it is all about express. So no appointment, come in, sit down, have your brows done. But our technicians are beyond skilled. So you sit down, they have they have a look at your face and they look at it holistically. Mm -hmm. We look at your face, the symmetry, where your brows should start, where they should end. You know, how often have you been for a brow appointment and they don't measure your eyebrows? Brows and you yeah. walk out with one brow shorter than the other. So the ethos behind the brow bar is all about symmetry. So you sit down, we have a specific tool, we measure your brows and we look at your brows holistically where they should start, where they should arch, um, where we can correct your brows because very often we have clients come in here with very thin eyebrows and they need thicker eyebrows mm -hmm. and it is the trend at the moment. So um, we train your eyebrows to get thicker and fuller and um, yeah, obviously we offer threading, which is um, you know the most appropriate form of brow treatments or the sh or shaping eyebrows. And um, yeah, and that's it. And it's a no appointment policy. So very glam. If you look at the the look and feel of the brow bar, it's all purple and gold. You feel yeah. like a queen when you walk in here. Definitely. You leave out feeling fabulous as well. So if someone wants to come in here, do they come in here and maybe they have a style of eyebrows they want to do, then it might not suit them, so then you say you would recommend not doing this. Look, we look at your face and trends change and most clients come in here with a, a shape that is almost, the current shape at the moment is going into a nice high arch, mm. angular into a point, which suits almost every space shape, so it's not wrong. Um, it's if you're going to come in here and saying you want your brows thinner, that my, my girls and my technicians will say, listen, <laughs> brows, thinner brows, they're not in fashion, they don't suit your face, let's get your brows thicker. We've got great products out there that the clients can use to change their um, they look. So I've changed my brows, I'm currently training my brows and I'm changing the art, I'm going a bit higher. And it is possible by stimulating new hairs and changing wow. your look. Yeah, I didn't even know that. that is possible. Yeah, we were talking about trends and thick eyebrows. Yes. I don't know, do you think that's a 
good trend at the moment. I personally don't like the thick. I eyebrow. love the Clara de Levine look. It's not suitable for everyone. Yeah. Um, definitely thicker brows are in fashion. The more natural looking brow. Um, highlighting and contouring is not going to go out of trend for a long time. So um, the ombre brow, very popular. Really? Yeah, so very light in the beginning, going darker towards the end. Um, <laughs> tapering towards the tips are also a new brow that's in fashion. And suits it, almost everyone because brows generally do start lighter in the yeah. beginning and then go darker. So it's just an enhanced Brow, so that's the way you fill it. Up. That's the way you fill it. Yes. So when you fill it, would you do? Would you recommend more of a pencil or the, I know there's also eyeshadow. So there's different options. You've got a brow gel. You've got a pencil. You've got a brow powder. Each product. Um, has its own unique feature. For example, a pencil would work great for someone that has a lot of gaps because the pencil almost sticks to the skin and is waterproof so it stays on if you especially if you've got very sparse brows. If you've got nice, fuller, amazing brows and you just want to enhance them, the brow shadow works well since it the, the pigment stick to the brow hairs. And then brow gels and dip, dip powders work for either or whether you've got sparse or not here. Yeah. Okay, so for me, say my eyebrows are black, but okay. my hair is brown. Right. So I can't exactly put black because then it's like in your face. Yes. But then do I put a shade lighter because that's... Mm, well, we never ever put black on eyebrows. Mm. It's, black is way too harsh. Whether you're a fair skin or you're a dark skin, black is just a big color. Yeah. So dark browns usually work quite well. Your taupe is a very nice color. Um, it's not dark but it's not too light and you can intensify the color as dark as you want so you can apply more to give you a darker color so depending if you change your hair color yeah the rule of thumb is not to go lighter than your natural hair so even if your hair goes lighter your brow shouldn't go lighter oh your brow okay. should remain natural okay. as your own brows dark and you know out there so yeah i was gonna ask then should i dye my hair no, <laughs> no, no, no. and the biggest no no is going into a hair salon and asking you know to tint your your brow color to your hair color because oh. those mm. those peroxides and those tints are mm. not suitable for your face when your skin on your face is quite sensitive so Going lighter is not an ideal, but going darker is definitely the way to go. Okay. Cool. Do's and don'ts you have for brows? I have lots of do's and don'ts. Um, so the biggest do's and well, the biggest don't is to shave off your eyebrows and redraw them in. Of course. Um, <laughs> simply because brows have a purpose; they're there to prevent oil and sweat from falling into your eyes. So if you shave them off, you shave off your protection. Um, secondly. Um, Try not to do a DIY. DIYs are almost epic failures since you don't know where your brows should start or where they end. So definitely the tweezer must fall. Um, my third advice out there would be to invest in a good brow product and good brushes um, and, and practice with filling in your eyebrows, getting the arches correct. The key about brows is getting them the same and we know that yeah. they're not twins. Yeah. They, just, <laughs> they can't look like far at the same time. So just getting them almost the same and you know, once you've got a good shape and you've come into the brow band, the girls have maintained your shape, filling them in is almost a breeze. Um, and yeah, not using black pencils, there are great brow products out there that are dark browns and um, medium browns and light browns. Um, if you have grey hairs, which is common and it happens as you get older, definitely not to pull out those greys because <laughs> once you do, oh. they, they never grow back and then you're left with lots of um, patches in mm. between your brows. There's a hint of tint that works great for the older woman that just almost coats the, the natural hair and lasts for the day. So yeah, there's lots of tips that I can give you um, and the greatest, um, I don't think there is a good do because there isn't a right or wrong. But uh, do invest in a good highlighter, yes, that is the part that goes on your brow bone. Mm -hmm. So hairs should never be on the brow bone and, and above and do blend well. So what do you think your osity factor is? Well definitely the brow bar osity factor is the way we um, measure our eyebrows, we design brows, we can change your life literally by changing your eyebrows. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so that is it for this video. Please check out the brow bar and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you liked the brow bar and subscribe and I'll put all our social media links below in the description so you can follow us and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>